the FET states of matter simulation to see what we'll be able to manipulate and what you might be able to learn from this simulation. First of all, in the top right corner, you can see the different substances that are available for you. We have neon, argon, oxygen, and water. You're familiar already with oxygen and water, so I won't spend too much time on those, but I do want you to notice that oxygen has two oxygen atoms combined into one oxygen molecule, and water has two hydrogen atoms combined with one oxygen atom to make one water molecule. That's different than both neon and argon, which each have a single atom. Neon, you might have heard of because of neon signs. When you pass an electric current through neon, it glows. If it's just pure neon, it glows with this beautiful red-orange color. When you add another chemical to it, like mercury, it glows a beautiful blue color. And if you moderate the different amounts and other chemicals involved, you can get different colors like yellow and green. And argon can also be used in lamps like this, and it glows a beautiful purple color. Argon has other uses as well because it doesn't react well with other chemicals, so it can be used as a protective coating of gas. For example, in this picture you see a man welding, and he's spraying a gentle stream of argon at the spot where he's welding. Normally, because of the heat, Oxygen would react with the metal, and this would cause a layer of corrosion, which weakens the metal. And of course, the point of welding is to make a strong bond. But the argon keeps oxygen away from the spot where he's welding, and that protects the, the bond of the metal and keeps the bond nice and strong. So now that you've been introduced to the substances, let's get introduced to the apparatus. You have a chamber here, and we have a window cut into the chamber so that you can see the particles inside. I'm covering that window right now because I want you to have to see the particles on your own during the experiment. I don't want to give anything away right now. I do want you to see right now the thermometer up at the top and notice the apparatus at the bottom for adding and taking away heat from the chamber. The thermometer by default is going to measure temperature in kelvins, which is a common way of measuring temperature in science. Zero degrees kelvin is known as absolute zero, and it is the theoretical lowest temperature possible. However, we don't use kelvins very much in our everyday life, so you might not feel comfortable using kelvins. So let's switch to using Celsius, which is also a common way of measuring temperature in science, and it's something you might have a little more experience with. Zero degrees Celsius is the freezing temperature of water, and 100 degrees Celsius is the boiling temperature of water. Notice here, when I change it from kelvins to Celsius, 14 kelvins is the same as negative 259 degrees Celsius. That's pretty cold. So that's where we're starting out by default. If I want to change the temperature, I come down to the bottom and I use this little slider. If you want to increase the temperature, move the slider up and the flame will appear. And as you can see, the temperature increases until I release the slider. Then you'll want to release the slider and just observe what happens to the particles. Let it sit for a while. Don't immediately start changing the temperature again. Let the system sit for a while, maybe one minute, make some observations, count particle interactions, 
let the system reach an equilibrium, write down your observations, collect your data before you change the temperature again. If you want to reduce the temperature, pull the slider down and the ice will appear. And what that will do is the ice will absorb heat from the system. And as the ice takes heat out of the system, you'll see the temperature on the thermometer go down until you release the slider again. And again, don't just immediately start changing the temperature again. Once you reach the target temperature, your target temperature, stop and watch the system. Let it sit there for a minute. Time it. Make sure you stop for the same amount of time each time. Observe the particles. Write down your observations. Count the particle interactions. However you're making your observations, make sure you do it the same way each time, each time you stop, for the same amount of time each time you stop. Collect your data consistently. Increase the temperature by adding heat. Decrease the temperature by removing heat with the ice. And remember that getting a bigger negative number is actually decreasing the temperature. So more negative is actually going down more. So that it's a bigger number, but it's actually a lower temperature. One last thing that I recommend exploring before you start experimenting with different temperatures are the different states of matter solid, liquid, and gas. So explore all of these different states of matter for all of the different types of matter before you start experimenting with different temperatures. And just notice the different particle motions, notice the different temperatures that exist for the different states of matter for each of these different types of matter for each of the different substances. Now you should have enough background information to start asking questions.